Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, today we are going to study the meaning of research. That is, uh, what is research? Uh, as this word suggests that it means re, re means again. And search means to find out something. So research means when uh, you are repeating a search for something or you are um, trying to search something which is not searched in a specific way so research is actually etymolo etymologically speaking research is actually derived or originated from an old french word uh, which means to search and search again it literally implies repeating a search for something and implicitly assumes that the, uh, the earlier search was not um, exhaustive or is is not a complete search or there is something lacking in that search therefore you try to um, search um, uh, in that specific uh, area or uh, regarding that specific issue uh, research is uh, may also refer to something which is uh, for the search of knowledge as well it is defined as the scientific and systematic search for pertinent information on a specific topic or area. Now, a research um, is not just a random search. It's not uh, something that you are uh, searching, you know, um, something which is lost and you are searching at home, something like that. It is not that kind of search. It is the search where you use scientific methods and it is very systematic um, uh, it is done in very systematic way so there is a proper sequence that you need to follow and it is um, it is it has different scientific methods and rules and regulations that you need to uh, apply and you need to follow when you are searching um, uh, something in uh, in a specific area mm, uh, the advanced learners dictionary of current english um, uh, defines uh, research as a careful investigation or inquiry especially through search of new facts in any uh, branch of knowledge and so it is uh, it is a careful investigation by the researcher so the person who's conducting research is called a researcher and um, some um, uh, people consider research as a movement, a movement from known to unknown, or uh, it's a it's a voyage of discovery. So some people believe that um, research is um, like you you are actually trying to find answers for certain questions and for that research you need to develop some research questions um, initially you need to develop some research questions then in order to answer those questions you need to have a specific um, a systematic uh, methods um, which are uh, which are used in order to find answers for the for those questions those systematic um, uh, uh, systematic uh, ways or techniques uh, can be data collection, data analysis, or um, it can be um, report writing as well. So in data collection, it refers to observing, measuring, and recording the information uh, where uh, you, where whatever you are analyzing or whatever area you're trying to explore, you need to find answers for the questions. So data collection, that counts under data collection. You collect the data, uh, which can be uh, the exact uh, representation of what you are actually trying to uh, find. So for example, I'll give you a scientific example of, uh, you know, uh, a medical example from medical, like for example, uh, in medical sciences, when we have Corona, so uh, a a single patient is the representative or is a representation of all the uh, patients of uh, corona so not one single patient but actually you collecting data uh, from 20 or 30 or 40 or maybe 100 uh, uh, 100 uh, people now that is actually the data that you have collected which means that uh, 
what kind of symptoms do they have same is the case with medical sciences uh, and same is the case with within english as well so you conduct data when you're trying to analyze a novel and you're trying to look at the different perspectives of the novel so this one novel is a representation of what you are trying to analyze or maybe if you're uh, conducting a research in you know maybe in a classroom environment so those students uh, bs english students are representation of uh, the other uh, bs english students as well so you generalize either you generalize or you don't generalize then based on that your um, based on that you you move systematically so data collection is actually the data that on which you are um, uh, going to base your argument data analysis is uh, it refers to the arranging and organizing uh, the corrected data so that um, you may uh, be able to find out what um, what is the significance and you know generalize about them so data analysis is actually analyzing the data so um, you know whatever your question is based on that you analyze your uh, data S similar data can be the data that you have collected can be analyzed for multiple purposes maybe you're trying to analyze it for feminism maybe you're trying to analyze it for uh, for the perspective of power maybe you're trying to analyze it for the perspective of story from the perspective of story the way style is there the kind of language that is used the the kind of language that is used there so data is already collected but that data uh is then analyzed and that analyze and then and that analyze is analysis is actually the generalization of what you're doing or or what whatever you are analyzing the specific research report writing is um the final um, outcome of your research study and its purpose is to convey information so what you have done in research overall right from the beginning till the end where you conclude all this includes uh, and all this is the part of uh, data uh, all this is the part of report writing so you include all of it in the uh, in the report that you are uh, forming. Okay. Um, coming towards uh, the steps which are involved in um, writing, there's a certain process that you need to follow when you are uh, analyzing, uh, sorry, when you are conducting research. And uh, that starts with uh, understanding the nature of the problem. It means that you First of all, you have to identify the problem. Identifying the problem is identifying the research gap. What is research gap? Research gap is any um, unanswered question, or you can take it out from the you know from the surroundings that you have. For example, you have observed something in your uh, everyday life which you think is uh, is is creating a gap in the knowledge. Like why is it happening? And there is a question in your mind, or it can be because you have uh, um, uh, you 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 they already there is a research conducted on that, but you believe that there is a gap. And gap can be, for example, the the issue is addressed years back and you think that now society has changed and you believe that you know theory can be challenged or maybe that there's change in the in the perspective the way people approach it and and and, and uh, you think that this is the time difference so uh, research gap can be uh, identified through mil multiple um, ways you should identify the um, a research gap then um, you have to understand the nature of the problem and um, you have to relate it to the area of the knowledge that is um, you have to relate it to uh, which specific area uh, is, is it lying so for example our students they normally commit this mistake that when they are looking at their society what they do is that they come up with the uh, with research topics or research gaps which are associated with sociology um, 
and they have nothing to do with uh, English uh, language or literature. So as a student of English literature and uh, linguistics, what you need to do is that you need to identify or link the same problems with that of your uh, area, that is with linguistics or with literature. Otherwise, it will have no significance uh, for you. So you have to relate it to any of these fields. You can also relate it to ELT as well. Then you have to review the literature to understand how others have approached and dealt with the problem. So reviewing literature is when you actually search on internet, um, you take out um, uh, different, uh, uh, you read different papers and you read different topics regarding that specific area or the problem that you have identified. So let's suppose uh, if you are trying to analyze whether um, uh, students of English uh, uh, speak or, or, or learn uh, English uh, faster as compared to the students of uh, other department because uh, English students are you know taught in English. So would there be any difference uh, due to the medium of uh, instruction? this is a question in your mind uh, and and you want to uh, is uh, you have to go and read literature on that you have to read other papers on that and based on those papers you have to build your argument so that your argument is strong enough uh, in order to uh, conduct your research then you have to collect data in an organized and controlled manner so as to arrive to a valid decision uh, once you are done with uh, reviewing literature you have to collect data for that and uh, collecting data is um, for that you need to uh, have many things in your mind and uh, along with reviewing literature you'll be able to identify your framework framework is uh, you know, a, a way of um, uh, uh, some a theory that you can apply uh, in exactly or uh, with, with uh, uh, exactly on your uh, um, the topic that you have and it relates to the topic that you have it gives you a theoretical support uh, it gives your research a theoretical support and um, you'd find it when you're you're actually reviewing the literature you collect data which is um, in a very organized way and that organized way is that you don't just go around and you know collect data randomly no there is there are different techniques for collecting data so whether you whether you're going from probability sampling to non probability sampling and there are different uh, different sampling techniques so we are going to study those uh, techniques in details but in detail but uh, for now you should understand that it is collected in a very organized way and it's not um, you know very just like um, when uh, when we have consensus um, um, oh, sorry when we have a uh, census uh, so, uh, we we uh, are collecting uh, data uh, re related to related to that. Uh, so when the data is collected, the data is collected based on um, the uh, family basis, like who lives uh, in one family, and based on that they collect data. Or uh, either maybe you are collecting data uh, as from only from males, or maybe you are collecting data only from females, or maybe you are collecting data from children aged uh, like two to let's suppose 10 or maybe you're collecting data from adults because your study talks about comparison between uh, the language that children speak and the language that uh, you know elders speak so it it depends on what is your research and then you collect data analyzing data appropriate to the problem and then you analyze the data but that an analysis must be in relevance with uh, your problem which i have already discussed um, that uh, the similar data can be analyzed from different perspectives so whatever your perspective is you would analyze your um, study based on uh, your uh, data based on that and then towards the end you draw conclusion and make your generalization so you conclude um, based on your um, 
uh, your analysis once you analyze it you base your conclusion so let's suppose if there there were males and females both in your uh, study you concluded that yes females talk more as compared to males because you have conducted uh, you have collected data you have collected data by interviewing or maybe by observing them and by observing them you have you analyze the data that yes females are uh, females talk you know let's suppose 10 percent more than males and you then draw conclusion on the basis of this uh, that uh, yes females are more talkative as compared to males and then you make generalization so making generalization means that though you have collected data from um, let's suppose uh, 100 men and 100 female but you are generalizing it that all men and all females or majority of the men and majority of the females uh, they um, you know have this this feature of uh, female females talk more as compared to male there are certain criteria uh, criteria for uh, good uh, research and the first one is uh, the purpose of the research should be clearly defined and common concepts um, can be used so uh, using different uh, concepts which are not understood by uh, every day um, uh, by by all the individuals it it should not be uh, uh, it should it should not be um, taken up like that so you should use always um, you should very clearly mention the purpose of your research and it must have some kind of uh, social significance like it must have a significance in um, everyday life so significance of your research is very important you have to keep in mind the significance of your research uh, when you are conducting a research research uh, produce uh, a procedure uh, used should be described in um, in sufficient details uh, to permit another research to repeat the research uh, for further advancement so this is also one important point that is yeah, you must write the procedure of the research procedure of the research is mainly uh, explained in the methodology section where where you have explained the methods uh, through which you have analyzed the uh, or you have conducted the research um, uh, then you must also um, uh, carefully plan uh, to yield the results that are as objective as possible so um, it it's very important that your researches are objective uh, subjective view uh, is is something which brings biasness and biasness uh, in research is not uh, acceptable at all um, so therefore you should always uh, carefully plan your research so that uh, the element of subjectivity must not be there and it is objective uh, then um, a researcher should uh, report with complete frankness flaws in um, procedure design and estimate uh, their effort upon the findings and uh, it's a very important that when the research is conducting uh, the research so they should be very open uh, regarding um, and the flaws in the research and when we talk about flaws so we can say you cannot say that you know you have done everything and have you it's not possible that you have done everything in research so you must write the flaws and those flaws are written in limitations of your study so what is the limitation of your study you can say that i have only taken male participants and not female participants or you can say that you know someone else can go and take more participants as compared to what i have taken like let's suppose you have taken 100 participants but you can say that maybe if you take 300 400 500 participants it would change so these are the limitations that you need to mention analysis of the data should be uh, sufficiently adequate to uh, reveal its significance and methods of uh, the analysis analysis of the data when you're doing the analysis of data when you're writing the analysis of, uh, of the data it must be very vivid and very clear so that your methods are clearly mentioned in that so that your uh, it it speaks for itself the significance that it has and there should be validity and reliability of the uh, data as well uh, conclusions should be um, uh, confined to those justified by the data of research so if you're concluding your data if you're making conclusions don't 
um, conclude something that you have not analyzed. So, for example, you have analyzed that you know females are uh, females. Or you've only studied females in your research, and you say that females use uh, more tech questions as uh, female use more tech questions, but you have not uh, studied males in comparison with that. And then in conclusion, you state that females use more tech questions as compared to males. This is a wrong conclusion because you are concluding uh, based on something that you have not analyzed. So you should be very careful while uh, conducting your research uh, in, in that sense. Uh, good research I may also have you know it should be systematic it should be logical uh, it should be empirical and it should be uh, research is um, uh, uh, replicable so uh, we have already talked about systematic that is you know everything should be written in systematic and proper order it should be logical something which is out of the world uh, should not be mentioned like for example someone has started conducting their research in fairies Obviously, it's very, you know, not empirical as well as not very logical. So unless and until you can prove it, uh, you must, uh, you know, base your arguments on the logical reasoning and through logical process. Otherwise, uh, the research is not a good research. Uh, secondly, um, a good research is empirical as well and uh, empirical means that uh, it is related to the real situations and deals with the concrete data so something that you can see something that you can prove um, should be there uh, so it's very important that uh, it, it it is something that is vivid there and is vividly explained uh, in the analysis only then it would be um, it would be possible and then there is uh, it, it's replicable replicable means that you know, it, uh, it, it, uh, you can you know verify the data so if for example you have proved something and the other researcher is replicating it so the exact results would uh, would be achieved this means that um, this research is valid and these are the features of very uh, good research and you must also uh, think and keep these points in your mind before conducting the research. Thank you.